Good day. I'll be talking about Table 3 today. Um, table 3 in your assignment 1, of course. Let's see what that table is. This is what it looks like from your data file that you received. A number of teeth and the speed will be different for you. This is the speed, rotational speed of the motor shaft and the number of feet on the pinion. Also please note that there is a typo in the Excel sheet you received. I'm not going to issue new templates, but this better line should read between vertical and line from idler to G2 center, not G1. So today I'll talk about how to populate this center, this table, uh, starting from the number of teeth, T num row. I should also bring your attention to the changes I made to the assignment one write-up. Let's go to Launchpad, Assignment One Home, because I was a bit confused when not writing it. So S distance is the distance from the intermediate shaft to the output shaft. That's the correct definition. It used to be from input to output, which is wrong. So I changed that, so S distance is the distance between the intermediate shaft and the output shaft, and that's going to be different for each one of you guys. So I made the uh, corrections on the assignment one write-up, and also I added a corrections thing here. Hopefully there won't be any more, but if there are, there will be, there will be an announcement, and also the correction is going to be noted here. So the other one was a minor typo in the assignment number one template, which I just noted. The beta is defined as the angle between vertical and line from idler to G2 center. Okay, let's uh, start uh, with the substance of today's video. The first thing you do is determine the number of teeth. So it is the row T num. Enum. So there are five gears, so you have to determine how many teeth in each gear. You're given output speed. The output RPM, uh, that's in the example data file, that's what I'm uh, basing this video on. It is 10,000. And I made a mistake, it is 1,000, I'm sorry. Let's erase this. It is 1,000. The input speed, the input speed is 10,000 RPM. So this is a speed reducer. And speed reduction ratio overall is SR is equal to 10. You have two stages, so it is probably a good idea to spread this equally over the two stages. I cover this in HD Mixer. HD Mixer is a case study that I post on the launch pad Heavy duty mixer, that's what HT stands for, HT mixer. And go to spur gears. Here, uh, I say, I'll show you how to calculate the individual tooth numbers for a given uh, speed ratio. In this case, it is 26.79. That shows you how to calculate the tooth numbers. And I suggest you follow the same procedure. I did, and this is what I came up with. The number of teeth on the pinion is given anyway. It is given as 17. And using the same uh, principles as in the HT mixer, I calculated the other teeth, other tooth numbers. G2 is equal to 53. That's the number of teeth on the gear 2. I have a degree of freedom on G3. I assumed it to be the same number of teeth as on G1, so it is 17. And to satisfy the speed ratio, G4 ends up to be 54. I don't know the number of teeth on the idler yet, which is denoted by G5. At this stage, that's not known, and we pick this to satisfy the S-distance requirement. Now, the easiest way to satisfy the S-distance requirement would be to have all three gears, 
gear number four, the idler gear, and gear number three, inline. Like this is gear number four. Like this, the idler gear, straight in between. So let's call that G5. Of course, that means inline means uh, beta is equal to zero. We just want to make sure that this distance is equal to S distance. Okay? You have two degrees of freedom. One is the number of teeth on the idler, the other one is the module. Of course, uh, the module is not a really uh, degree of freedom because you'll have to check if it satisfies the strength. So it is really a trial value. Let's start with a trial value for the module. In this example, I'll just start with module equal to 1. So this means I can calculate the number, uh, the diameters of the gears. D2 has 53 feet, so with a module of 1 millimeter, it will have a diameter of 53 millimeters. Similarly, D3 is going to be 17, and D4 is going to be equal to 54. Let's call the idler center A. Uh, the center of the gear 4 is C and center of the gear 3 is B. So AC is going to be equal to module. Actually, forget the module. We calculate the diameters. Let's use the diameters. The distance from A to C is going to be the idler radius plus the G4 radius. So it is D4 is known, 54, half of it is 27, and that's plus D5 and 2. We don't know the idler diameter D5. Similarly, AB AC is AB is equal to eight and a half plus D5 on D2. D5 we don't know. Sum of these AC plus AB is equal to S distance. In the example file, S distance is equal to I think it is 299. 299 millimeters. So we have 27 plus 8.5 plus D5 is equal to 299. So D5 is equal to equal to 2.263.2 no, 2, 2, 6, 2, 6, So that's, there's plenty of space to fit the idler, so you can uh, get a number of teeth. If that probably is going to be too many teeth, so you may have a slightly larger module, and you can achieve inline if this were the only concern. But then you'll have to calculate the tooth strengths. The module you select to make this inline inline configuration possible may not be large enough to satisfy the strength considerations. In the example calculations, to get a factor of safety uh, for the gear teeth, I had to increase the module to 5. So what happens if the module is 5? Then you have D1 is equal to 85. This is the diameter of the first gear. Diameter of the second gear is going to be 265. Third gear, the same as the first one, 85. Fourth gear, 
is going to be 270, I think. I hope I'm not doing something wrong. I'm just doing this mentally. Then using the similar uh, process as I did for m is equal to 1, you can calculate AC and AB and then find DI or D5 as as 235, uh, that's coming from half of uh, D4, sorry, 135, plus half of 85, which is 42.5, plus D5, to be equal to 299. And that gives you D5 as, so D5, the diameter of the idler gear uh, becomes 121.5. The module was 5, so you can have a proper idler. I mean, that's going to be a legitimate number of teeth. That's about 24. So it appears that if the M5, M uh, module of 5 is sufficient to provide the strength, and you won't know it at this stage, you'll know it once you run through the calculations, then you can have an idler, 24, and achieve inline configuration, and beta would be 0. That's okay. That depends on your data set. If you cannot achieve the tooth strength, uh, with m is equal to 5, and that's going to be a bit on your ingenuity too. Sometimes you have to, as you can vary the numbers, there are things like face width and other parameters that you can have some control on. But if you do all you can, but for the minimum module you can afford, if you cannot achieve an inline calculation, then you'll have to do an idler, which is offset. So you shift the idler to the left, so this is idler, and then your beta angle, so this is A, becomes this. And that beta is going to be non-zero, of course, a, a non-zero number. You calculate that from the cosine law on the triangle ABC, and you enter it uh, to table 3. So try inline first. If that doesn't work, you have to shift the idler to the left. The main thing is to satisfy the S distance because there's a hefty